my name is Laura. I am the co-founder of Sheets That Teach, along with my good friend, Anne Marie, who is with Applied Advocacy. And she advocates for all different types of students, whereas I have a digital product business where I create spreadsheets for productivity. But we've combined our forces and we're making tools for students, for support staff, for teachers of all kinds. So as you know, this is the yearly behavior log, and I'm going to be going through everything in it, all you need to know before you start using it. So let's get started. A couple things to note for this specific template is you can use this year after year by either saving the original link that's sent to you, which will be in a PDF, or you can save it to your Google Drive as a blank template and then you can just copy that year after year. When you originally get the link, it should prompt you to copy it to your Google Drive automatically. If you're getting an error that says, sorry, unable to make a copy, it's most likely because you do not have enough space in your Google Drive. So once you clear out space, you should be able to make a copy. If it doesn't prompt you to make a copy when you click the link, all you'll do is go to file and make a copy and then you can label it whatever you want and then click make a copy here. So you could save it as a blank template if you like and then copy that copy, but it's all your preference. We wanted to make this as user-friendly as possible for all teachers, all support staff, and for parents and students to quickly understand where they're at. Keep in mind that this is for 52 weeks, but you do not need to fill in all of the weeks. Just leave the ones blank that aren't relevant to you. One last thing I want to mention about the overall template is this is just for one student at a time. You can continue making copies for different students, but this is for just one student. Okay, let's get into the tutorial. The first thing you'll do is add the student's name here. And within these cells, there's little notes here. Um, if you want to get rid of these, you just right click and then delete note, and then they won't be there anymore. But we like to keep that up just as a reminder. So you'll type in the student's name here, and then all of the behaviors that you want to track, up to five. You don't have to fill in all five. It could be two, it could be three, it could be four whatever you want. It could be one if you want. If you do fill in all five, this frowny face will pop up if zero to two rules are followed. If three rules are followed, it'll be this yellow one. And then if four to five rules are followed, then it'll be the smiley face. If you have less than five behaviors, you can focus on the percentages here. So zero to 40% is this one, 41 to 60 is this one, 61 to 100 is this one. So the zero to two is just for if you fill in all five. You can have an image for each behavior. There's a little reminder here, so you'll click into the cell, go to insert image, insert image in cell, and then you'll just drag your image in here. I got my images off of canva.com, but you can find them online if you just want to Google whatever it is you're looking for and save it as a JPEG or a PNG, and then save it to your computer and drag and drop into what I just showed you. You'll list your subjects all here up to 25. Again, you can just leave spaces blank if they're not relevant. So right now I just have 10 example ones filled in with 10 photos that correlate to each subject. So that's it for the setup tab. Once you have that all done, you're more than welcome to hide this sheet if you don't want it there anymore and you don't think you're gonna be filling in any other data. I'm gonna go over to the weekly tab and come back to the overview just so I can show you how everything works. Now right now on the weekly tab, everything is very zoomed in, so it depends on what kind of device you're on. Obviously if you have a large screen, you can see more, but you can go up here and just zoom out to whatever size that you like. I'll keep it at 100% right now. I just like the way that this looks. But there's a frozen row right here, and if you scroll down, you can see all the different subjects. So right now, I only have 10 subjects filled in. If I wanted to, I could hide the extra spaces by highlighting the rows, right click, and hide rows. And this is gonna show up every so often because we protected certain ranges. There are a lot of formulas within this template, so we just wanna have at least a warning pop up saying, you might be messing with something, but hiding rows is okay. So you can click, don't show this again for five minutes and click okay. And then that way it's just the 10 that you want to see. So I'm on week one right now. And as you can see, there's four weeks down here. The rest of the weeks are hidden and this one is not in the right spot, so I'll change that. But um, you can see all the other weeks here up to 52. And so whenever you want to see a hidden tab, you'll just click on it and it'll pop up. And if you want to rehide it, you'll go here and click hide sheet. You could have one week up at a time so it's not so overwhelming. Right now, we just have the four weeks, just have the full month if you like, whatever your preference is. Keep in mind, if you have all 52 weeks open at one time, it may slow down the automations of the spreadsheet. So keeping less open will make the spreadsheet faster. So we do recommend not having all tabs open at once. 
You can rename the tabs if you like. So if it's for a specific week, you could do 162110 and label it like that. So filling in the information. The first thing you'll do is add the date at the top and this makes everything populate. So if I double click in the cell, I'll select the Monday, June 2nd, and then everything will populate. This will add a day and then add a day. So then these dates will fill in. You only need to add a date on this first day here. And then as you can see, all of the subjects popped up, all of the behaviors popped up. And so I recommend only filling in the dates when you're on that week, because otherwise, if you pre-fill in all of the dates, then all of those stats will be added. And so it'll be, for example, out of 13,000 points for the yearly overview when you want it to only say 650 right now. So we don't recommend pre-filling all of the dates for all of the weeks, but you can do whatever you want, obviously. As you can see, there are five days of the week here and a weekly overview tab over here that's fully automated. There's a lot of automations within this tab specifically. The information that you can be filling in is the comments here for the day, the comments for each subject, obviously when you're checking off the behaviors, and this comment section over here for the end of the week comments. So those are the areas you can fill in. In the comment section, if you want to type in a comment here and then have another comment underneath, if you're on a Mac, you'll click Command Enter as many times as you like, so then you can type another comment here. If you're on a PC, then it would be control enter and that's it. And you can use that for any of these, any of the cells within this template. Also, if a student is absent for a specific day, each day has this little absent checkbox up here. So if you check that, all of the subjects will disappear. It'll say absent up here for your reference and none of those subjects will be counted towards the stats. There's a little drop down here that says absent or school closed if you just want to have it say school closed instead. But again, it's just for your reference. So whatever you choose here will be displayed in this cell here. If a student is absent for just one or two subjects, all you have to do is go to that day and delete the subject name and it won't be counted towards any of the stats. If there are certain things that you don't want to track within a specific subject, you can go here and delete them. A warning might pop up again and you just click OK and everything's fine. I deleted these two, so if I click all these boxes, it should go to 100% here. Throughout the day, you'll check off the behaviors. If no behaviors are followed, then you'll just click the none here and it will turn red. You can see the count up here for each behavior, how many smiley faces there are, and then the percentage along with the points as well. Once a week is fully filled in, you can go over here and see the weekly overview, add any comments that you like. Another feature on this tab is you can collapse each day by using these buttons up here. So if you click the minus button, it will collapse them. If you click the plus, it will uncollapse them. So let's say you only want to see Wednesday. You could have it up like this. And if you think that's ugly, because I kind of do, you could highlight the um, columns here, right click, and then hide. And so the plus and the minus aren't up there or anything. But we'll just keep it there for now. If you wanted to, you could go to File, Print, and do Landscape and maybe print that out for your reference later, but that's just one option. Last thing I'll mention about the weekly tabs is there are some formulas that are hidden in these columns next to everything. So for example, here you can see a formula. Just wanted to mention that. And also there are hidden, um, hidden areas down here. Just keep those hidden and everything will work fine. And that's it for the weekly tabs. Let's go over to the monthly overview. On the monthly overview tab, you can see the student's name is over here in the header. Only thing you have to do on this tab is select the month. So if you go to March, it'll show you the total points for that specific month, the green smileys, the yellow smileys, the red smileys, how many days they were absent that month. Also each behavior, the points, the total points they could have gotten, and then the, and then the total percentage for each as well with little progress bars here. Same with the monthly breakdown by subject. Right now I only have 10 filled in, but if you click this little button here, if you have more than 10 subjects, then it'll uncollapse this area. But we just added this so it can look a little more consolidated if you're going to print it. Over here right now we have automations to detect what their best subject was, 
what they're great at by behavior and what they're still working on. Now, if there's a tie, for example, only one of them will pop up depending on where they are on the list. So if you want, you can delete the subjects and then manually type in what subject they were best at. And if you need the formulas again, you can go back to the original link or I can send them to you. If you go up to File, Print, you'll want to click Portrait and then Fit to Page. And it will look something like this when you print it out. And I think this is just a great printable format and it looks adorable. So you can print this out every month or just if you want to have it for the whole year, a little binder or something, I don't know, all up to you. Now moving over to the yearly overview tab. This has a lot of stats on it, but once you take a closer look, you can really see the different trends. Now this is only for one year. So this drop down is just here for if you make a copy for the next year, then you can select 2026. Right now I'm just using it for 2025, so that's what I'll keep it as. Again, their name pops up here in the overview, how many days they were absent this year, total points, total percentage, total green, smileys, yellow, red, with a little pie chart. And if you hover over it, you can see the percentage. So like green is 72%, red is 13.8, and yellow is 14.1. And then we have a monthly percentage by subject. So all the subjects here will be listed out automatically, obviously, and each of the months as well. You can see there's a lot of blank space here. If you want, you can highlight this area and then hide it. And as you can see, there's a little line graph here showing you all these different percentages here. So you can see a trend line. Going down here is the yearly percentage by subject. So this is for, this is the percentage for the entire year by subject. Arrival, for example, 62.8% of behaviors were followed. Again, if you want, you can highlight these extra ones and hide the rows. You might just have to adjust this column chart here. Now the green tables down here, this is for behavior. So it's the monthly totals by behavior. So in January, calm body was 81%, was followed 81% of the time. And like the subject one, there's a line graph here to show you the trend for each of the months. And lastly, there is another column chart showing you the yearly totals by behavior. So calm body was followed 83.9% of the time, listening ears 74%, stayed in area 69.8 so you can see where they're excelling or where they need a little bit of help. You can also print this as well if you'd like by going to file print and then make sure it's in portrait and fit to page and you can print that off. There's also a collapse button here and if you uncollapse it you'll see that there's a comment section for each of the tables in case you have any um, things you want to jot down, any trends you noticed, etc. Last thing that I'll mention is there is one tab in here called data, don't delete. And this is where all of the data is going to. So like it says, don't delete this. <laughs> but that's it for the tutorial on this yearly behavior log. If you have any questions, email us at sheets that teach at gmail.com and we'd be happy to help you. And we're really excited for you guys to use this product. The weekly one that we had was a huge hit and we got so much feedback and we've implemented that feedback into this version. And we really hope that you guys like it and it's useful for you and your students.